Let us address the Second Amendment issue. Everybody says, well, Jank, no, I know we have one massacre after another, one shooting after another with guns and assault rifles and semi-automatics. Contrary to what the media would have you believe, gun deaths in this country are not that big of a deal at all. They're only 0.44% of the total U.S. deaths. But there's nothing we can do. Hey, have you read the Second Amendment? Well, great, I'm glad you asked that, because I have read it, and I'm pretty convinced you haven't. So let me show it to you. Quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Do you understand that the first part of the sentence is what you call a qualifier? Not, you know, they could have just written the sentence, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. Right? But they didn't write it that way. No, you can't leave out the militia part. It was intended to empower a militia. If the Founding Fathers had the same intentions that this guy believes, they would have worded the last two lines like this. The right of the people of the militia to keep and bear arms should not be infringed. They put a qualifier in the beginning. They said, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, hence you get the arms. Actually, the Second Amendment is very simple. There's two elements and one condition, all separated by commas. Element number one, militia, separated by commas. The second element, which is the right to bear arms of the people, and that is the condition of they shall not be infringed. If you're using it as part of a well-regulated militia. To prove that the Second Amendment intended to empower the people to bear arms, let's look at the individual states where the Founding Fathers came from. You will see segments of the state constitutions and who they intended the right to bear arms to. Here are the individual state constitutions. Georgia, starting out, had the constitution worded just like the Second Amendment. South Carolina, however, included the people. That means one of two. North Carolina included the people. Two of three guaranteed the right to bear arms to the people rather than the militia. Virginia, three of thor four, body of the people. Maryland does not count. No provisions. Delaware, 4 or 5, the people, the right to bear arms, not a militia. Pennsylvania, 5 of 6, with the citizens and the people both mentioned. New Jersey does not count. New York doesn't count. Connecticut is state 6 of 7 with a constitution that mentions the people, in this case, every citizen. Rhode Island, state 7 of 8, the people. Right to bear arms. Massachusetts, 8 of 9, the people. New Hampshire, all persons, that is the people. Right to bear arms, not the militia. Now that is overwhelming evidence. That's 9 of 10, 90%, that the founding fathers of the day intended the people the right to bear arms. The only way you could possibly believe that the Second Amendment is only intended to empower the militia the right to bear arms is if these founding fathers were forced against their will to write an amendment that they didn't believe in. Now why is that? In their experience, they needed a well-regulated militia because oftentimes the troops weren't enough. They'd literally be fighting Indian nations and the army couldn't do the job by itself and they'd need the militia of that state. And they argued over and over again in the Federalist Papers, hey listen, we need to train these militia better. They need to be a well-regulated militia so that when we go into conflict, they could help the army win the wars. Now, which part of these jackasses carrying Sammy automatic weapons throughout the country are part of a well-regulated militia? Okay, let's give you the benefit of the doubt, because I know, talking to anti-gun people, that the comma separator between the two elements of the Second Amendment is not going to justify anything other than the reason that they want to believe. I'm also well aware of the vast majority of the Founding Fathers' overwhelming evidence wanting this to empower the people to bear arms is also a theory full of holes in the eyes of the anti-gun groups. One avenue you might consider is what the forefathers of the day believed that a militia should be. Here's one interpretation where the militia are in fact the people themselves. Here's another interpretation that sees a militia as ourselves or the people of the state. Here's an interpretation of a militia as people trained to arms. 
And here's an interpretation that explains the militia as the whole people, which would include every man, woman, and child. So for those of you who really believe that the Second Amendment was intended to only grant the militia the right to bear arms, consider what the militia was. It was the people. And if you are a person, you would then, in turn, have the right to bear arms. And what are we doing? We're fighting the Cherokee? Is that what's happening here? And back then they had muskets. Thomas Jefferson didn't know you were going to use an Uzi on your neighbors. Let me tell you why the Founding Fathers would support you defending your life with an Uzi if you were attacked by an Uzi. Because they felt very strong that your right to defend yourself came by your virtue of existence, not what the federal government determined. If the Founding Fathers knew that you were going to be carjacked by an Uzi, they would not require that you defend yourself with a musket. You're not fighting tyranny! What are all these people doing in all these shootings? They're shooting innocent civilians! When innocent civilians are being shot at, should they have the right to shoot back? You say, oh, not me. But I don't care if it's you or him. You give the guy, you give enough people in this country unlimited access to this kind of high weaponry, and what are they going to do? Yes, some mentally deranged people are going to abuse that. Interesting how he mentions that mentally deranged people might kill others, but how yet in another video he argues against their profiling for gun enterprise. That's why you need regulation which is already in place it doesn't mean we take your guns away but what it does mean is that we can be sane about this don't you have to be sane first that not everybody has the right to it says right to bear arms what so that you could put a rocket propelled grade a grenade an rpg on your shoulder walk around uh, open carry open carry you right to bear arms it has been generally accepted that the term mass usually consists of the number equal to four or more. That is in context with the terms of murders and shooting. A weapon such as an RPG or a grenade launcher can kill four or more people at one time. And if this weapon can kill four or more people at one time, it is considered by the FBI to be defined under the term mass, or weapons of mass destruction. These weapons of mass destruction are generally considered not applicable to the Second Amendment. That's why it's widely accepted that RPGs and grenade launchers aren't covered under the Second Amendment. What part of your ass is part of a well-regulated militia? This is nonsense! According to this whack job, the Second Amendment wasn't even created to represent the state laws of the people who actually created it. Alright, look, to give you a better sense of it, this is what they said back in 1777 in the journals of the Conti uh, Continental Congress. Resolve that this appointment be conferred on experienced and vigilant general officers who are acquainted with whatever relates to the general economy, maneuvers, and discipline of a well-regulated army. I give you that quote to give you a sense of what they meant by well-regulated. It meant a disciplined force that you could call upon when you need it. It's nice to know that this guy knows what the alternate definition of well-regulated is rather than a government regulation. Whether it's to fight the Indians, to fight a different government, etc. It was not Bob in Tennessee and, you know, Dave in, in Wisconsin or whatever. Even if you were misinformed enough to believe that it was the militia who was intended the right to bear arms, the Founding Fathers believed that the militias were comprised of the people. So if you were a person, you would have the right to bear arms. That is why Bob in Tennessee or Dave in Wisconsin would have been given the right to bear arms. Cleaning their Uzis in their basement. Here's another one in context. This is from George Washington back in 1889 to give you a sense of what that word means. If your present numbers should be insufficient for that purpose, I would then by all means advise your making up the deficiency out of the best regulated militia that can be got. Referring to help in fighting off the Indians. Go get your best regulated militia, not Bob. For yet further evidence that the Second Amendment wasn't designed to give only militias the right to bear arms, consider this. Those founding fathers were still alive after the Second Amendment was created. Those founding fathers would have seen people all over the place just like Bob, people that actually had possession of firearms. They would have surely wanted to do something about it. Also note that there are no historical records of those citizens of the day hiding their private firearms from the United States government. This doesn't have anything to do with you protecting yourself against an intruder. Who needs laws to protect them from intruders when you're a progressive?
Sure, this doesn't have anything to do with your unlimited right to carry nuclear arms or whatever thing you want to do. Again, the definition of mass is four or more. A weapon of mass destruction is a device that can kill four or more people. These definitions could not have been created by the Founding Fathers because those weapons did not exist in their day. They had a specific purpose for this amendment. What happened? I thought you guys were all about strict constructionists. As opposed to whack job technicality deconstructionists? Whatever's in the plain language. Let me give you the plain language once again, because you're apparently completely and utterly ignoring it. Quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. You ignore the first part because it is convenient for you. No, you merge the two elements into one because you don't like guns. Because you want to have your guns, the gun manufacturers want to sell more guns, the NRA wants to make more money and buy more politicians. You see that? Just when you were doubting my wild accusations that this guy doesn't like guns. You are not part of a well-regulated militia. This is nonsense. You do not have an unlimited right to keep and bear arms.